The city of Baguio has a population of approximately 100,000 people. The hillsides crowded with hovels were a vivid reminder of the third world nature of the islands. The cantilever construction did not usually fare well during the 7.7 .7 shock. Despite the fact that city hospital buildings maintained their integrity and were safe for use, the staff and patients were too traumatized to re-enter them. Our team medical supervisor, Dr. Joe Barbera, told of witnessing emergency cesarean operations and the like being performed outside in dusty, fly-ridden conditions. He stated the functioning neonatal facility was a local doctor's automobile with four newborns lying in the back seat. The U.S. rescue team provided medicines, tents, plastic sheeting, and medical supplies to the local hospital personnel. Helicopter operations were a continuing backdrop to our command post operation. Scores of American civilian personnel were evacuated to Manila or the states. U.S. Marine Sea Stallion helicopters were used to ferry in large diameter pipe to be used for repair of the damaged water system. I don't know, I guess it's pipe. The Sea Stallion's rotor tips literally knock the humidity out of the air as the pilot pulls pitch upon takeoff. Food, water, and necessary supplies had to be brought in by air. Massive earthquake-induced landslides had blocked all roads into Baguio. Medevac operations brought injured in from devastated outlying areas. U.S. Rescue Team medical personnel assisted with victim stabilization prior to their transfer to area hospitals. An important aspect of a mission, what we term disengagement for lack of a better term, must be conducted prior to the termination of a response. Me. 
All information compiled by the team is furnished to the local and federal officials to assist them in their management of the disaster. We received uh, information from an uh, independent source, an ham radio operator, of a um, uh, serious situation between San Jose and San Jose. We have no confirmation yet, but the uh, radio operator calling from San Jose has been on Team demobilization is an equally arduous task. All tools and equipment must be ready for transport home by the weary team personnel. Angel? Angel? How many of those wood hand saws do we have? We got one right here. I think uh, the other one was lost. The other one's lost, okay. Let them have it. Did anybody say where? Yeah, right. where, at the, where at the airstrip that we... Uh, these are all trying to get out of country. Out of country? Out of Baguio. Stay to the left of that torch, I think there's a place you can drive it down. There's a drop off here. It'll be a little bump unless you get on the sandy car. U.S. Air Force C-130 transport aircraft were used to ferry the team back to Clark Air Force Base Manila for subsequent return to the United States. The following rescue of a man named Mayo was undertaken within the first few hours after arriving in Baguio. As you can see, this is the Hotel Nevada. One of the two hotels received substantial damage. We've got reports of confirmed live people trapped in the building to the point that we've been able to see victims' hands moving. Apparently, the first the second floor on this building collapsed. And the rest of the building came up, came down on it intact. The rest of the personnel setting up operations. We just arrived on the scene. We've been uh, in the Philippines now about two and a half hours. Some of the miners who have been working on the scene for an extended period of time. Ready to go back in, Filipino miners. Right here, right here. Okay. And uh, we need to get the pregnant, pregnant woman uh, first, because uh, 
a uh, concrete beam is pressing on her. Yeah, pressing on her belly. And we are afraid, uh, afraid uh, that the child might uh, die and mother dies too. Are there any other, any other known uh, locations in here? Anybody else? Um, we have retrieved uh, the others, uh, except the uh, dead ones. So really? Yeah, the ones who were alive are now out? Yeah, they are out from this place. Okay. So we were able to get uh, uh, get uh, these two women, women uh, over here. When? Uh, early this morning. Ah, good. Okay. Then we were able to get three more Today. just this afternoon. Good. Right. So how many are left in there now, do you think? Uh, there are about um, around 32, but uh, we have about six confirmed uh, alive. Still in the, it's still inside. Where are the others besides these, besides these two? Where are the others? Oh, we do not know the. You don't know. You don't know. Yeah. You just hear. But they are dead. Rescue team personnel enter the building to provide advice to local miners who had been working more than 40 hours rescuing trapped victims. And it was shown on that little sketch the gentleman had. We think that the. We're experiencing an aftershock right now. Got a, got a significant aftershock right now. These people probably exiting the building right now. Since we've been here in the past two hours, we've had about six, six aftershocks. But, but we'll come down and tell you the whole story. Okay. Instead of drilling a big hole, we're going to take a big hole. Uh, you can't locate the smile now from, the, from their position below. They've got an entranceway in there. It's all optical. Okay. What we're going to, going to do here to make an assessment, we're going to use the, uh, the drill drill to drill through the floor and we're going to use the fiber optic scope to try to do an assessment. We're going to work up in this floor area to try to assess this void area down here. Mattresses are piled below the pre-planned escape route. After an hour and a half search operation using fiber optic equipment, the team pinpoints the location of a victim deeply entombed in the middle of the building in what was left of the second floor. Rescue personnel had to remove sections of a heavy wooden floor to allow access to the 10 inch thick reinforced concrete structural floor.
healthy. Let's use the healthy. Give me a chip in the for the bar. Talking about the screw one? No, it's got a chipping screw. Or a chisel. Chisel, chisel, yeah. Outside, right? That's it, that's it, healthy. That's it, healthy. I thought this is it. Sorry, bitch. Gotta have a fire in the end of it. Over this way. Yeah, but let's take the whole way through. We're no, we're going. We're going. We're going. Hey, we're Mitch. Going. Hey, which, which way is he? I think. Hold on. Hold on. Shut up. Quiet, dude. Shh. Quiet, guys. On what? Bring the army to me. Mayo! He's that way. Listen, hold listen. it. Hold it. Mayo! That's a. Mayo! Shh. All right. He's right up on you. Who's what, he at? What's happening? This the dust is getting to him. Okay. Can you give it to him from up there? Yeah, Dang. we can give it to him. We... Is he pinned? Which way is he? Oh, hold yeah. it, hold it. Danny. Tell Danny to Tell ask him if he can see the flashlight down here in the hole. See if he and can how see far. Can ask you him see the flashlight, the flashlight in the hole? Tell me how far it is from him. With personnel talking over each other, the effects of prolonged fatigue are evident. Taking into account mobilization and travel time, the personnel had by now been awake nearly 48 hours with little rest. How, how far from the hole is he? We got a keyhole saw. Danny! You mean a sawzall? A keyhole saw. No. For what? For what? what do you want to do? Try and go through that floor? Right here. Just. Personnel use both pneumatic and electric impact hammers to break up the concrete. The hydraulic Hurst Omni tool was used to cut through the reinforcing steel members. Danny. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
We'll get something. Rubble removal is slow, arduous work. We get another, uh, another a, a little uh, pack shovel. Yeah, each each uh, pack has a shovel in it. You need one from outside. Yeah, yeah. Make it a lot easier to do it by hand. Get a little scoop on it. Made in Taiwan. We cut that wood. I don't think so. I think we should poke some holes in it. Yeah, yeah. I hope it's not here because I hope it's not here because he's too far away. No, this is some other I don't think he's got that much energy. I think it's that other project going on. Those guys, uh, I thought they were working on this side of us. We got through that other thing yet? Yeah, we're, ready to we're, yeah, we're down right to the, to the ceiling. Right. We got a big uh, two by three hole here. We're right above them. We're going to break through here in a couple of minutes. Hey, Danny. Yes. Can you see him? Yes. Look, we went this way with him. Uh, the from the Hyatt, where we got two teams uh, looking at both sides of the building. We want to know uh, what's happening up in Nevada, if there's any chance that they're going to have some people free from there soon. Plywood comprising the second floor ceiling had to be penetrated next. The team decided to leave this intact until last for the protection of the victim. Go ahead. Is that him pounding? Yeah. Can you touch me? Let me see if I like it. Say, can you feel me touch your phone? Go to the chat. Can you feel me? Yeah. Am I touching you? Shut up. Let us have it. Quiet, guys. Hey, Mayo, am I touching you? Am I touching you? Okay, that's you? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no. Mayo, Mayo! Mayo, shut up and listen! Mayo! Am I pinching you? Am I pinching you? Can you see the light? The flashlight, can you see the flashlight? I don't think he's on the other side, please. Demonstrating ingenuity under demanding conditions, a sheet was spread to catch the broken rubble to speed its removal. Pitch, start low. Great care had to be taken as the victim laid virtually inches below the cuts being made. Let's 
Is the is the leg holding up that uh, ceiling no. to any degree? What, what he's doing, he's sitting. He was he was like sitting in a chair. Yeah. He was sitting in a chair. Is that is that is that a flash on for the flash? Marky. Yeah. Yeah. You guys gonna bring it back to us and let me play then? Well, we got to see here what we got. Yeah, somebody been over in there? They, they said that beam is laying on a dude's feet. Which one? One leg. The left one. Let's get a good light down there. Which I which got some big light? It's down in the hole. Gangle. Chris's gangle. We need is a. Uh, Hold on a second. Hey Mario. Chris. Mario, let me ask you. Where is it? Mario. If we cut, if we cut this, Bill, can you move yeah. up? We need to go that way. Can you move? Like two rafters. Hold a second, because we might have to cut anymore. No, wait a second. If we cut this, yes. can you come out? Yes. That might be holding. What do you think? Okay, okay, but that's just it. Not, that's we'll get to that now. Uh, logistics to Carlos. We'll get to that now. Go ahead. Are you Are you using 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 guys. What? Tremor, tremor. Huh? The piece of what? Tremor, uh, uh, tremor, uh, that's what he felt. It's over now. Yeah. It was a small one. Oh, okay. Recurring aftershocks were a frightening backdrop throughout the nine hour operation. Occurring approximately every 20 to 30 minutes, the gentle ones merited discussion, while the stronger shocks, which would cause the building to sway and settle, would set the team running for the window. Feeling that bag right there. We cut it off. Okay. With the sawzall, and, and is his leg going to be in the middle of two beams? Well, we cut both sides, we could just drop it. Let me see the light. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We yeah. cut here, yeah. we cut there, well, and his leg is here, it'll cut, just drop. Cut where? Look, if this is two beams, right? If his leg's right here, right. we can cut the wood on each side and drop his yeah, leg. Yeah, yeah. It's mm. a concrete That's beam, right? right? Yeah. He, he, he's going, he's, he's no, it's a concrete beam on top, uh, but what they're saying is wood below. That might have been right. My That's, yeah, that's feasible. Yeah. That's yeah. Never yeah. 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 yeah, that's a good yes. idea. We can cut we can cut down. We can cut down. Mm. What? We got one right here ready. Yeah, we could use yeah. another we're need another two bottles. Yeah. The thing is the thing yeah, is this though, so, okay. an air pack is thirty is one. We're getting real low. 
An airbag is a minute. Why don't we do like something? Probably. Let's, let's get an airbag. The smallest airbag we have. All right. Let's get an airbag. I think an airbag. Okay. 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 An IV was started to medically stabilize the victim. His left foot is pinned under a large concrete beam, preventing his removal. Medical observation, you guys look really dehydrated. Uh, you uh, you figure? Uh, you figure? Uh, no, you just relax. Okay, you don't have to do anything. Thank you. Right, Here, throw it over here. Uh, yeah. This is uh, good, this is good water, right? Uh, it's good water, right? Yeah. I'm going to be acclimated. Phil, what the hell happened here? Well, get rid of this one, that one right there. That's it. You get rid of this one? Go. You don't get the other one from over there. You get it on. Turn a little stick here, okay? Get it on? Turn them out. I can't already push it. Alright, try to do it. Here, make sure you start. That's the battery yeah, pulling low. Right oh, oh, wait a minute. I know what it is. Huh? Come on, come on. I think you know. No, you're right. There you go. Cut right it, in there. Cut it. Huh? And then Cut maybe it. you can get a bite on the. On okay, the no problem. Thanks. I don't know, man. We'll see. Okay. Well, yeah, because it says that you can get at the edge. There's no reason why you can't get at the edge. Keep on cutting Fire. up until we can put the air. Why you lay that flat? They got the girls off. Keep on. Uh, Bullpoint. Chris, do we have a, uh, a tip on it that's flat that we can push? Thanks, Bill. Oh, yeah. Huh? Yeah, a small one. I think I have a small flat. That's the one I wanted to give John. Give it to him right now. We, or you, can you do it maybe with a small sledgehammer? Ah. Uh, Get in there and tap it with a small sludge. Tip. Where's that small sludge up there? What I did is I splinted a pillar. You, you're you're uh, finna uh, be on the other uh, side. Uh, my beard was like... Uh, I'll flip it over. Okay. Bring it home. What's the time left? Is that back? Uh, Bill, that's, is that the 6x6? Six six? That's the, or the 8x8? Eight, eight eight. 12, uh, 12, 12 by 12? 14 inches, maybe. Yeah. That is, that'll lift that 1 inch about 16 tons, it, doesn't it? I think, I think, I think it's it should be like 8 yeah. tons, 8 tons, isn't it? No, it six, should be like 16. 16 inches. Oh, bingo! You got it. You got it. You got 16 really tons, guys, 1 yeah. inch. All right, Bill, it. go ahead and stick a wedge on each area anyway. No, he's in there. Get stuff in there. Sir? After an additional two hours' work, the team finally frees his ankle and prepares for his removal. Come on out, Bill. And, uh, all right, where's the backboard and everything? Okay, sir, so we'll get you out. Good job, guys. 1115. We are die off. You want to take over and the package and see? Um, yeah, well, why don't you get up here and talk to him so we can call him out? Okay. Can we get a back for him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, Bill, right 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 you okay, Bill? Right. Let's just get stiff right. in that first. Yeah. Okay, it's right, right there's a collar. Okay, right there. Don't let you put it. Are we not going to fit that back door here? No, you don't. No, no, no. Let's just try where I can get a collar on him just to be sure. 
Where's the gun, Bill? I'll tell you what, he, he's, he's not going to tolerate that collar, the way he's been fighting in there. Yeah, he might be better to do yeah, it out here. Just, 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 once you get no, around here, just slap it around. I just don't want any fast moves. Mario, right, keep your eyes closed. Yeah, don't keep, yeah, good. keep your eyes closed, Mario. Don't keep your eyes closed. Keep your eyes closed. Yeah. Keep your eyes closed. Keep your eyes closed. Right there. Hold on to your belly button. We got a man. Somebody's got to manage his head. I'll take this head if you can grab his shoulders. Yeah, as long as you get him up here where I can grab him. All right. Now, you can bring his shoulders up. Billy, you just man. Billy, you manage his chest. Yeah, somebody, somebody got to watch that fall on that leg. That leg's gonna come up. You got to control it. Billy, get left. Be careful, careful. I, I got, you can let him go. I got, I got, I, I hold on him up. Billy, move down to his leg, Billy, when he's out. Okay. Keep your eyes closed, Keep your eyes closed. Keep your eyes closed. You're coming out, buddy. Get that out of the way. Yeah, I guess that's better. Wait, wait, wait. Chris, what? How you doing, Mayo? Okay? Right on the back. Get, get out of the way. You're right there. Watch his face. Watch his face for that. Close your eyes. Close your eyes, buddy. Okay, don't hyper his neck. Chris, we need a strap. Let go of that strap. Why don't we grab him, buddy? Let go of the strap and go for his arm. Get his man. Somebody got here. Control his head. I got the neck. Why don't we just bring him on the back? Get him on the back. Get him on the back. He's on it. Lower the back. He's not on the back. Well, lower the back. Lower the slide back with you. Yeah. Yeah. KJ, get ready for some Watch splitting. Watch his feet. Watch his feet. Hey. Watch his feet. Get ready yeah. for some splitting. Got it. Got it. Lower leg. Ankle. All right, he's caught. Okay. okay. He's caught on the strap. He's on. All right, let's go. One more. One more. Let's go. Raise it up. Go. So. All right, good, good, good. Right up. Okay, hold on. Hello. Okay, Maris. Thank you. Just stay right there, buddy. Before you wrap it up. It's okay, my friend. It's okay, my friend. All right, man. I'm as happy as you are, brother. I'm as happy as you are. Three things I don't have. That's three in general. Unbelievable. I've got girl extra all the time. Let's get some of the things out. I got it, bro. Go ahead. Take those out. 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 Hey, 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 The mission of the U.S. Rescue Team is to support ongoing local rescue efforts during disaster situations. The team supported successful rescue operations providing tools and equipment, lighting, technical advice, and trained personnel. Search and reconnaissance missions, structural and medical evaluations, dissemination of available information to incoming teams, and feedback to local officials were but a few of the accomplishments of the U.S. Rescue Team's Philippine response.
Our program will resume in two minutes. Our program will resume in one minute. Welcome back. Our topic is safety issues and considerations for special rescue situations. Now, before we get started, we have a very important safety announcement that's in interest to all members of the fire community. On March 13, 1993, a firefighter was killed while refilling this high-pressure 4,500-pound self-contained breathing apparatus, SCBA, air cylinder. The air cylinder burst, and the fragment you see here killed the firefighter. On April 30, 1993, the National Institute for Occupational Safety and Health, NIOSH, released this safety advisory on sudden neck failures of aluminum cylinders. Over 40,000 of these safety notices have been mailed by NIOSH and the U.S. Fire Administration to all fire departments in the United States. Please be sure to read this notice. The hoop-wrapped cylinders may be identified by the lack of a reinforcing neck ring. This photograph shows one SCBA air cylinder without the reinforcing neck ring and one with the reinforcing neck ring. If your department has cylinders of this type without the reinforcing neck ring, immediately place them out of service and contact the appropriate equipment service personnel. Remember, there are thousands of these SCBA air cylinders still in use. It's important that your SCBA air cylinders are not used beyond their 15-year service lifespan and are properly tested every three years by federal regulation. If your department does not have accurate records as to the age of its SCBA air cylinders, the date of manufacture can be located on the cylinder. On older cylinders, it is stamped directly on the cylinder. The date of manufacture of this cylinder is the date with the up arrow. In the case where there are multiple dates stamped on the cylinder, find the earliest date stamped. On newer cylinders, the date of manufacture is generally on a label. Now remember, it's important that your SCBA air cylinders are not used beyond their 15-year service lifespan. Federal regulations also require that your department's SCBA air cylinders are hydrostatically tested every three years. Hydrostatic test dates can either be stamped on the cylinder or on a label. Accurate records of the hydrostatic test dates of your department's SCBA air cylinder should also be documented in your department's equipment maintenance records. For further information, you may contact Richard Metzler 
at the National Institute of Occupational Safety and Health at 304-284-5713 or William Troop at the United States Fire Administration at 301-447-1231. Our discussions this afternoon will center around several topics, rope and high angle rescue, water rescue, and agricultural rescue safety. And our first guest is Captain Sam Turner with the Ventura County, California Fire Department, and he's here to tell us about the special considerations in dealing with high angle and rope rescue. Captain, welcome to the show. Thanks, Rich. Safety during rope rescue operations is a pretty big subject. However, I'll attempt to provide you with the basics and point out areas of controversy. I hope to stimulate discussion and perhaps some further study on the part of interested firefighters around the country. I'd also like to leave you with some simple rules that should make it easier to make decisions in the field when rope rescue systems are being set up and used. The first and most important rule is know your equipment and its limitations. This can only be accomplished by study and practice. You might want to consult standards such as NFPA 1983, Fire Service Life Safety Rope, Harness and Hardware or a number of texts that are available on rope rescue. In addition, several sources throughout the country provide hands-on instruction. During rope rescue operations, if rescuers are working in a position where the possibility of a fall exists, it's called exposure. In a situation with exposure, preventive measures must be taken. One of your first actions at a scene with exposure should be to set up a barrier line to prevent access to all dangerous areas. This restricted access should apply to rescue personnel as well as onlookers. In addition, you should establish safety lines and anchor them securely. Anyone working near the danger must wear appropriate safety equipment. A designated safety officer should oversee operations involving exposure to ensure that safety rules are followed. Rope rescue can be broken down into three basic categories, low angle systems, high angle systems, and high lines. Low angle systems are used when the angle of descent is less than 60 degrees. High angle systems include those set up to raise and or lower victims and rescuers at angles greater than 60 degrees and include vertical rescues. A rope rescue may include both low and high angle work in the same system. For instance, a hillside may be steeper than 60 degrees with some runs of less than 60 degrees and vice versa. Highline systems are used to traverse from one point to another through the air and are the most complicated and risky. Highlines may be used to transport rescuers and patients from a high place to a low place, from a low place to a high place, although this is rare, or between points at the same level. Highline systems are complicated and should be discussed in detail at another time. Today we'll focus on low angle and high angle systems. Both high angle and low angle systems share a few basic components. An anchor, a raising or lowering system, and a belayer safety system. Anchors are objects whose stability or weight is greater than that of the load being lifted or lowered, hauled or stabilized. There are two types of anchors, natural and man-made. Natural anchors can include trees, boulders, brush and root systems, and are most frequently associated with wildland environments, but they may also have urban applications. Man-made anchors include vehicles, such as fire apparatus, structural components, and other stable man-made items. Anchors should be selected with careful consideration given to the purpose of the system, the size of the load, the direction of polar loading, and the strength, contour, and location of the anchor. Normally, a single point anchor of sufficient strength to support the load is preferable to a multi-point anchor. Usually a section of rope or webbing is rigged to the anchor and then the rope system is attached to the rigging using a carabiner. This rope or web sling should be wrapped around the anchor with special attention paid to an attachment that avoids tight bends which weaken the sling. To avoid slippage, the sling can be wrapped around the anchor several times in a multi-coil configuration. Any sharp edges on the anchor that the sling might come in contact with should be padded. Heat and petroleum products are harmful to nylon rope and webbing and also should be avoided. Rescuers should be very careful when considering the use of vehicle wheels as anchor points because of the potential for sharp edges, 
grease, and the heat from brakes. Multipoint anchors can be constructed in several ways, the most common being two-point and three-point so-called self-equalizing anchors. While these anchors work well to distribute the load, tests have shown that rather than being self-equalizing, they really are only self-adjusting. When the direction of pull changes on these self-adjusting anchors, as when the load moves from side to side, the force on the anchors becomes uneven as the anchor sling adjusts. This change in force overloads one of the anchor points, and a single point may bear the force of the whole load. When this occurs, an anchor point that is too weak to support the entire load will fail. When one point fails, the increased force of the moving load as the sling readjusts to tightness will probably cause the other anchor points to fail. As long as a multipoint anchor system of this type doesn't have to adjust very much, or if each individual anchor point is strong enough to support the load by itself, then the system is adequate. A better multipoint anchor system may be one in which the anchors are in line with the Hall system and are back tied. In this type of system, the anchors are tied together in a line and tensioned together as in the 111 picket system shown. This can be done using a number of inline trees, bushes, or structural components depending on what's available. The caution here is that if the load shifts much from side to side, the system loses strength. The rescuer must be aware of the strengths and weaknesses of the anchor systems available and choose accordingly. The best choice when available is the single point bomb proof anchor because it's strong enough to support the whole load and is the easiest and quickest anchor to rig. So here's the next rule. When rigging an anchor, choose the strongest, simplest bomb proof anchor first. Don't get fancy if you don't have to. The next basic category is the lowering and raising system. When it comes time to build a rope rescue system, the problem will be getting rescuers to the victim and then moving both victim and rescuers to a safe location where medical transport is waiting or if the victim is uninjured, everyone can breathe a sigh of relief and go home. Lowering systems usually include some type of friction device on the rope to control the rate of descent. They're simple and fairly straightforward. The friction device is attached to the anchor sling and the rope runs through it. As the rescuer and or victim is lowered, a team member tends the rope and feeds it through the friction device. Here, the device must create enough friction to control the load. Raising systems are a little more complicated. To raise the rescuers and victim, the mechanical advantage usually needed comes in the form of a pulley system. Pulley systems are available in all sizes and shapes. The most common systems used in rope rescue provide mechanical advantage ratios of 3 to 1, 4 to 1, or 6 to 1. I'm often asked what's the best mechanical advantage to use in a pulley system. A discussion of the relative merits of various mechanical advantage rates would take some time, so instead I'll just add another rule to make it easy. Always use a system with the least mechanical advantage that can be managed by the personnel available to haul the rope. In other words, a one-to-one -one system is best because the more mechanical advantage the pulley system produces, the more rope the crew has to move and the longer it takes to move the victim and rescuers from where they are to where you want them to be. The crew only has to pull one foot of rope for each foot the load moves in a one-to-one -one system. Therefore, it is the most efficient. And remember, the goal here is to get the victim to safety and, if needed, to medical aid as quickly as possible. The less mechanical advantage, the quicker the rescuers and victim are moved. Another feature of the raising system is some type of ratchet brake on the rope. This can be either a mechanical rope clamp or a prusik. The brake is usually placed at the anchor point closest to the load. It is attached to the rope and connected to the anchor with a load releasing type hitch. The load releasing hitch is a design to allow the brake to be released under load. This is done so that if the load gets hung up on an obstacle in the path of travel and the brake is accidentally set, the hitch can be released and the load freed. The load releasing hitch also comes into play if it becomes necessary to pass a knot in the haul line through the pulley system. 
Belay or safety lines are used to provide a separate rope backup for the main line in a rope rescue system. The belay is the part of the system that must be able to catch the load in the event the main line fails. Therefore, it's extremely important that the rescuer utilize a belay system that has the strength to survive the stress caused by a mainline failure. The belay has four components. The rope, a ratchet or friction belay device to catch the load, a load releasing hitch, which was required with a ratchet belay device only, and an anchor. There are several variations on this basic and most effective belay system. Rope rescue systems that use this kind of belay are often called double line systems because one line is used to raise or lower the load and the other is used to belay. Here I should mention some of the pros and cons of having a system that uses two separate ropes that both raise or lower the load. In this case, the rationale is that if you're going to have two ropes anyway, one to raise or lower the load and one to belay the load, you might as well use them both to do the work. However, remember that when both ropes are raising or lowering the load, if one anchor point or rope or other component of this system fails, then it will be necessary for one side of this double system to support the load alone. Another factor here is that rope under tension is more susceptible to damage from falling objects and sharp edges, and thus there's a greater chance that the system will fail. The double line system includes, in addition to the raising or lowering system, a separate single belay line that is not under tension, but has as little slack in it as possible. This lack of slack limits the distance the load can fall if the belay is activated. The belay backs up the main line, utilizing a separate person or persons to manage a friction or rope grabbing device on the belay line. It has a separate anchor point that secures a load releasing hitch that in turn is attached to the belay device. Let me repeat, this double line belay system is preferred and should be your first choice whenever possible. A double line self belay uses a fixed belay line attached to a separate anchor point. In this variation, fall protection is provided by the rescuer who is traveling on the system. This belay would usually be used during a rappel but might also be used when the rescuer is being lowered. A prusik or mechanical rope clamp is attached to the belay line and to the rescuer's harness. The rescuer manages the belay device with one hand and during a rappel must manage the rappel line with the other hand. Again, the self belay rope has little or no tension on it until a fall occurs when the belay device sets and catches the load. This prusik or mechanical rope clamp is said to be an auto belay device because when the rescuer falls, the belay device should set and stop the fall automatically. Single line belay safety systems are